Hey everyone, welcome to Princess the Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to episode 3 of Trece. Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying this so far. Episode 2 wasn't as horror-like as episode 1 was. Um, it definitely focused more on the mystery. But we got some backstory with Trece's father. We got some new creatures. Apparently, the, uh, as I called them, goat creatures were actually horses, and it's just... The leader had horns for some reason. <laughs> I mean, it's they're mythological creatures basically, so it's 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 allowed. <laughs> um, I, I I did just kind of assume, I guess, based on the horns, but um, it, yeah, it's it, it was pretty interesting. We had a number of stories last time uh, that were kind of focused on all at once. A number of characters. Um, we got to meet the two, uh, air nymph girls who were hilarious and adorable and pretty damn hot. <laughs> so, that was pretty fun, but I'm, I I'm interested to see where more of this goes as we continue along. Because we're going to get, like, all these different mysteries, but we're going to still have our main mysteries that keep recurring and getting worked on throughout it. Um, we only have six episodes, though, and this is halfway through with today's episode, so it's hard to, it's hard to really say where this is going to go since we have so few. How, this has to move pretty quickly. Um, I don't know if there's going to be another season or not, but, I mean, I could see there being more. We'll just have to see how this progresses, so... Um, let's just get on with it. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Okay, so let's just start with the, the little beginning part, the um, cold open that centered on the past. We're, we're getting more with that. We're getting more with Ramona. Uh, so, so I think it was the case of last time that it was the father who had confronted Ramona, not Alexandra. So we see this time Ramona er, uh, confronted the uh, commander guy, not Ramona. <laughs> um. But yeah, the the father who had con confronted the commander about Ramona. Um, but we see in this one, Ramona gets her revenge against him as well. We had found out that the way she killed the um, his men was by literally making him do it, because apparently that's what he did to her. And since original, since he originally, you know hurt her and and victimized her and everything she had apparently um fallen in love with this blood god and we see in this one she gets her revenge on the commander she uh manages to kill him by summoning the blood god into his body which is pretty wild it's a pretty wild uh, intense scene but then when she introduces him to his to their children their twins he basically is like, ooh, food. And it's like, oh, <laughs> you're one of those. You eat your young. Okay. <laughs> um, there are animals that do that in real life. And it's like, oh, that's a thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Apparently, um, that happened. So we're, I feel we're going to still get more with uh, the backstory in regards to that um, going forward. Um, meanwhile, this episode mainly, uh, this episode focuses on one thing compared to the last episode, which focused on a couple. Um, in this one, in, in the main current timeline and everything, um, we're investigating the death of this doctor, this uh, young dermatologist, 
who usually works with a pretty high-end clientele, uh, celebrities and whatnot. So we saw her death. We saw she was dragged under a car and violently, you know, eviscerated. And we see the aftermath with her guts pulled out, her clawed and bitten all over, her face is twisted. It's like she's just been all kinds of fucked up. Um, so they start uh, to look for answers, and the once they uh, they go to this hacker, and he hacks into the CCTV and into the uh, phone that was nearby. And they're able to find out that the last person that the doctor was on the phone with right before she died was her best friend, who is this uh, celebrity actress um, named Nova. Uh, and so they go to Nova to find out more, find out that she's a she's acting as a familiar to this, uh, this mushroom man. <laughs> And we find out pretty quickly what this creature is. We find out that she's been uh, watched while on set and everything. And that the creature watching her and the one that killed the doctor are, this, are one and the same. It's a uh, Tianok. A Tianok is like this little goblin baby-like creature um, that yearns for a mother. It's basically a reanimated corpse at the same time. So, the Tianok is looking for its mother, and in this case, it literally happens to be Nova. We find out that Nova um, had a baby out of wedlock, and um, after giving birth, had the doctor take it into the mountains and leave it for dead. And apparently, it did die. Which, I mean, of course it did. It was a baby left out in the mountains. And so now it, it's come back as a Tianok to try and find its mother. It killed the doctor because she was the one who left it out there. She was the one who basically killed it. The baby is it, just a baby and didn't, didn't know that it was her mother who asked the doctor to do so. But we find that out because... Um, Nova it, it like tries to seemingly comfort the Tianok, but then ends up violently and brutally murdering it instead while going absolutely fucking insane and yelling about like, you ruined my body for nine months and shit. And, and, and the mushroom man even like, um, like, uh, later on like kind of uh stands up for nova and says like having a baby out of wedlock would have ruined her career and everything it's like you just don't get it and it's and and, and alexandra is like fuck you <laughs> she's just like she is pissed <laughs> like she's like this woman is a monster like she literally says that the the real monster here is her and you for uh, uh, you know helping her <laughs> and it's like yeah <laughs> Alexandra is not putting up with that shit. That is horrific. She had her own baby killed because it would ruin her image. And she feels it did ruin her image for nine months. And then she violently and horrifically murdered it a second time, her, this time herself, when all it wanted was her love. And in the end other Tianok came and violently killed her which honestly very fucking deserved like the bitch deserved to die I'm sorry but it's like my god it's like how much of a monster can you be if you don't want a, if, if you're not in a place to have a baby or whatnot then one use protection or use you know contraceptives or, or whatever you have to use to to stop that from happening hell have an abortion i i guess the only reason she might not have done that is i i, I don't know like what abortion laws are like in, in uh 
in, in, in Manila, so I, I can't say there, <laughs> but um, may, even if it's just like, if she want, worries that it would negatively impact her career to have an abortion, it's like, just make sure you do it in private or something and spin the story that the baby like uh ha ha was like already dying in the womb so it's like you could spin that in any way i'm sure like you had to have sp spun it some way to explain the baby's sudden disappearance <laughs> presumed death right because people would have known you were pregnant um, it's just, or even like, if you didn't want to do that, you could have like adopted it out, given it to some other family or put it in, I, I, as much, I, I don't know what the system is like there, but I know it's terrible here in the U.S., but if you can't take care of it, it's better than nothing to put it into the uh, foster system and whatnot. Um, the foster system, again, here is fucking terrible, but it's better than having a, a parent kill you, you know? There are other ways this could have been handled. She chose to have her baby killed. She chose to have her best friend take that baby up to the mountain and leave it there to die. That was an intentional choice. And... <sighs> like... I don't know if this is like the most accurate term, but parental infant side is, is something that very much bothers the shit out of me. Because it's like, I mean, a baby dying in, in the first place in any way, of course, bothers me. But especially the parent killing the baby, killing their child, it, it's just like, it's just a whole new level of fucked up. It's like there is no reasonable excuse for that. Like, you guys saw how much it bothered me when um, that girl was killed in the American Crime movie. And that wasn't even her mother. That was just, like, a, a mother figure to her. But you even saw what she did to her own kids and everything. And so you saw how that, that bothered me. And it's like... And there's been there's been other movies on this channel um, where it actually was the mother. Like I think there was one that was just called Mother or something like that. Um, but it, yeah, it's like you you know how much that stuff bothers me if you've seen my other videos that have touched on that topic. Unfortunately, um, it's just. I'm sorry, she deserved to die. She and she it does she deserved for it to be as painful as possible. Like she is an absolute psychopath and I like Alexandra even more that she called her out on that shit. Even if not to her face. Probably she just didn't have the patience to do it to her face cuz she probably would have killed her herself if she if she didn't walk away from that. <laughs> I would not have been surprised. Um, but yeah, the, the Tianak, uh, they got their revenge on her, and good. And, and I think it's even worse that she violently and brutally killed it after, like, kind of giving it hope and, like, pretending to coddle it and everything. And then after the fact, she's just laughing about it practically. It's like, and people call me a bad actress. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, you sociopathic shitbag? You absolute cunt burger. It's like, how are you, how are, how are you that disgustingly evil? Like, my god.
Like, she is easily my most hated character in this series so far. <laughs> it's not even close. I despise her. <laughs> I'm glad she is dead. <laughs> I just kind of wish we got to see her remains um, rather than the doctors because I, I felt that would have been more cathartic. I, I, I'm not as upset at the doctor, by the way. I, I haven't mentioned that yet. I'm not as upset at the doctor. Like, she... She seemed uncomfortable with it when she left the baby there. She didn't seem like she was entirely up for doing it, but she only did it because it was her best friend and she wanted to probably, you know, make her happy and everything. She she didn't seem like she was that bad, comparatively. Like, she didn't take any joy in doing that. She still did it, and that's still very wrong and bad, but she at least wasn't as evil as Nova. Um, I don't think she... I, I think she deserved to be punished, but I don't think she deserved the death that she got. But Nova definitely did. Um, but I also understand why the Tianak did kill the Doctor. Like, th from a lore perspective, that makes sense. So it's like, I just, I wish we had seen the remains of Nova instead, because I feel like that would have been a little more cathartic. But just knowing she died and seeing the blood splatter and everything, at least we got that. Um, at, at least that we, we, can, we can sleep soundly at night knowing that Cunt is no longer in the world. And I know, I know it's fiction, by the way, and that's the reason I can say all of this, because I don't believe in, like, the death penalty and, like, people being killed as retribution for their evil actions in real life but in animation and stuff like anything goes <laughs> it's like that's that's where i'm allowed to let loose on that kind of shit where i'm allowed to uh i'm allowed to just let my emotions kind of breathe rather than having to hold them in because of you know my moral beliefs and everything um, and, and in real life, I stand by that. I stand by, like, holding to my moral beliefs and being against the death penalty and stuff. I, I'm full, I fully stand by that. But there are some people in this world that are so evil. It's like, yeah, you, if it weren't immoral to do so, you would kind of support the idea of the death penalty for them. Like, rapists? 100%. But I... It's immoral. It's absolutely immoral. It's unethical as fuck. It's it's not okay to do that. But in when it comes to fiction, when it comes to animation, it's like all bets are off. It's fucking animation. It's not real. I understand it's not real, and I understand the difference between it and reality. So all bets are off. That that cunt deserved to die. Fuck her. <laughs> um. I, I hope you guys understand what I'm what I'm talking about here. It's like you can be a little more okay with that kind of shit in fiction as long as you are able to separate that. If you have a hard time separating fiction from reality, then you need to make sure that you're not doing that or not thinking that kind of shit even with fiction because then it could be a problem in reality. It, it, you need to be able to separate the two. And if you can, then all should be good. And most people, I think, can. I, I, I think most people are able to understand the difference between reality and fiction. Which is why people can play stuff like Mortal Kombat and be like, oh yeah, let's kill them, let's rip out their spines and stuff, but would never advocate for anything like that in real life. <laughs> um... But yeah, sorry for rambling on about that for a bit there. It's just, she pissed me off in so many ways. And it's a, it happened so suddenly that it's like, I, I just kind of needed to talk about it here. <laughs> just to get those thoughts out. Because it was it was basically right at the end. Though I was I was talking about, like, during a little bit of that, that I wasn't quite sure if, like, maybe she was the villain. Like, she was the monster. I, I mentioned that, and it's like... But then we see that she's not. It's like, okay, maybe I was wrong. But no, she she was the monster in the end. Yeah, I, I was right. <laughs> it, 
It's just not in the way I was thinking. Because there there were some things and some ways she was talking about things that were a little off, I feel. She was a little suspicious to me. Um, so I felt like it, it was valid to ask that stuff. And, and to question it. But just the way that ended up happening, I did not expect <laughs> Uh, so yeah, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this episode? Because it, it certainly affected me. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments below. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.